Hello and welcome to the DSP project. I'm your host Rupert Brown and today I want to talk about multi-setting effects. Uh, in particular having each clip inside of a channel give it, have its own unique set of settings for one instance of an effect. Now what got me thinking about this is I've started thinking about a new live set and I like using the beat repeater function. It's a lot of fun to use live. Um, the only thing is though, it can get a bit repetitive if you use it too much. Now in the past, I've uh, sort of combated that by uh, tweaking it on, on the fly and that's, that's a lot of fun. But the only thing is with, um, with drum loops or anything really, there's not a one size fits all. So depending on where the snares are in the pattern, one uh, setting, one bunch of settings on the beat repeater is not going to be the best for everything. And while you can adjust things uh, live, it, it's, you're not necessarily going to get the very best configuration. So I wanted to tune it to the point where I could have the, the very coolest uh, repeater settings for each loop inside of my live set. Now, my initial approach to this was to use an effects rack and throw in a bunch of beat repeats. And while that does work, you may end up with 16 plus units um, all doing essentially, essentially the same thing. And uh, 16 instances, instances of the effect is going to use up uh, a lot of CPU and just didn't seem like the smartest way of doing things. So we do have, I will show you a way to use one unit uh, and have a completely different set of settings for each clip. Um, but I will warn that it does seem, uh, it's not that intuitive, it's a bit of a clunky way of doing things, I admit that. Um, but if you, it does work, and I think if you do put the time into your live sets and sort of have it really uh, well configured, then that's all going to pay off come showtime. So let's have a look how it's done. Right, so we have a blank Ableton live set. I've just thrown in two drum loops. Um, they're quite different, so they sound like this. So one's kind of a fast jazzy thing, the other's kind of a slow hip hop thing. We'll start off by throwing in a beat repeat. I'm actually going to throw in two beat repeats. And I'm going to label this one on the left, so Command R, call this Test. Now the unit on the left is what we're going to use to find the repeat settings that we want for each clip. And then the unit on the right is going to be the repeater that's going to stay in the set that will be used later on. Change the settings on the this right repeater to sort of a blank, let's say one bar, one bar zero, one bar zero, 100%, one bar, zero, zero and I'm going to set the chance to 0%. So the chance is, what is the chance the beat repeat is going to kick in and do its thing? So by setting it at 0, it now bypasses this, this particular beat repeater. Now I will find, I'm going to use the test unit now to find some settings that I like for this, for this first clip. So let's say that's the settings that I want to use. Now, how I'm going to do this, rather than just uh, changing these knobs to match our test unit, which will only work for one, uh, which will only work for one instance, we're actually going to use the envelopes for each clip to control the um, to control the knobs. So I've got the, uh, my first clip selected. Moving um, from our test unit, we see that the uh, the intervals the same, one bar, one bar, so we can leave that. But the offset. Uh, we want that to be 8 over 6, whereas we are 0 on the actual unit here. So if I move this uh, knob so that the offset is selected, that means that when we uh, jump over here to our envelopes, the envelope selects the, shows us the envelope for the last knob we were playing with. If you can't see the envelopes, there's a little E down here that you need to turn on. So we've got the beat repeat offset and we want to turn this up to 8. Now, as I turn this up, you'll see there's a little number that appears here in the top left-hand corner that shows us where we are. So we want to set it to 8. Oh, that's 7. 8. So now if we jump back over, we'll, we see under the offset that while the, the bar, the, the little uh, knob is at the bottom and the offset is shown as 0, there's actually the orange ring here shows us that the envelope is actually taking us to where we want to be that matches the same as our, as our test unit. The gate we need to move... Um, down to minus 
uh, 8 over 16. Now if you don't know, if, if you can't uh, calculate off the top of your head how many steps you're going to need to get to your test unit, uh, you can just count it out by using the, the up and down arrow keys will actually take you one step at a time. So I need to get to, I know I need to get over 8 over 16, so I select this gate unit and push the down arrow and count as I go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I know that I now need to go down eight steps from one bar to get to where we need to be. So we, we tab over, we drag down eight steps, and again we can see from our little orange ring here that the envelope is bringing us to where we need to be. So even though that these these uh, are now on one bar settings, this this re this repeat unit will actually perform the same as our test unit. So we'll just give that uh, a quick test. So set the test unit. And yeah, now we engage the. So cool, we've got that to work. So now on to our next loop. We'll just play it to find and try and find some settings we want for it. So as you can hear, it's not that great for this. These settings aren't that great for this loop. So let's uh, change it up a little bit. So now, if we want if we want those settings, we basically go through and apply the apply the same process again. So we see uh, on the offset side of things, it's four over sixteen. Uh, so we we just highlight the highlight the uh, offset knob here, and I know I need to jump it up four. Tab over and pull this up to four, and you'll see that our that our offset is now here. So once we've gone through, I won't go through and do that because we'll be here all day. This has probably gone on long enough as it is. But once we've got that set, um, if you now watch this, uh, watch this offset knob at least, we'll demonstrate what we've achieved. So you can see that the uh, that little orange bar jumps around as our envelopes tell the beat repeater what settings it needs to be using. Now the way I use a beat repeater on a live set is I like to be able to just punch it in and out uh, when I want it. Now a little a tip on that is originally I used to map uh, a MIDI control to the on off uh, button here to turn it on and off but I found you can get some slight, slight sort of clips and sort of undesirable noises by turning the unit on and off. What I found to be a lot more efficient is actually mapping to the, the, the chance knob so that the beat repeater is always on and by hitting your MIDI knob it will engage it to 100% and then it will give you your, your nice stutter that you want and then you can, uh, you can uh, take it in and out as you please. So I recommend for punching beat repeat in and out that you map to the chance knob not to the on and off button. So that's how I did it. Now, as I said, I, I will admit it is a bit of a clunky way of doing things, but it does seem to get the job done. If you can think of a better way and could share a bit more light on this technique, then please head down to our website, thedspproject.com, and share that with all of us. But as far as I can see, that is the, uh, the best way to get that result. Uh, while you're at our website, you can also subscribe and make sure you don't miss out on any new episodes. And finally, uh, you can email me direct at inbox at the dspproject.com if you've got a question about Ableton Live or maybe you just want to talk about robots. Uh, that's all we've got time for today. Join me next time where we will be talking about something else.